What's going on, people? Today I'm going to discuss method overriding using Java. Method overriding is when a subclass provides its own implementation of a method, rather than use one that's inherited from a parent. It allows for code reusability, and you can give specific implementations of a method. Let me give you a demonstration. We'll be creating a few classes. File, new, class. We will begin by creating a class of animal. Then a new class of dog a class of cat, then finally, a class of fish. Dog, cat, and fish are going to extend the animal class. After the class name type extends animal. So let's do this with cat and fish. The dog, cat, and fish classes are all children of the animal class. Animal class is the parent class. There's not a lot we have to write with this example. If a child class inherits from the animal parent class, they will inherit a method to move. Let's define a method of move. All we'll say is this animal is running. We can keep the dog, cat, and fish classes empty for now. So going back to our main Java file, let's construct a dog object dog dog equals new dog, a cat object, cat cat equals new cat, and a fish. Fish, fish equals new fish. All three of these animal objects, dog, cat, and fish, should have a move method. Let's take our dog, call its move method. Same thing with the cat and the fish. Cat.move method, fish.move method. Currently, when we run this program, we get the following output. Our dog is running, our cat is running, and our fish is running. But fish don't have legs, though. They can only swim. The move method that the fish class inherits isn't appropriate for that class. This animal is swimming would be more appropriate. So why don't we do this? Within the fish class, why don't we do some method overriding? Specifically for the fish class, we will create a unique move method only for this class. We will define a new move method where we will say this animal is swimming. However, it is good practice to add this annotation of at override so that you and other developers know that this method is being overridden. Our fish class does inherit a move method from its parent of animal. If you have the same named method defined in a child class, you'll use that one first. It has precedence. Going back to our main Java file, let's call the move method for our fish. Our dog is running, our cat is running, but our fish is swimming. Within the fish class, we have overridden the move method. We have given a specific implementation for this method just for this one class. The cat and dog classes will use what's inherited from their parent. Not only is it good practice to add this annotation of at override, but let's say that you misspell this overwritten method. Rather than move, let's say moves, even though it should be move. We're receiving a warning that this method does not override the method from its superclass, its parent. If you didn't have this annotation, you may not notice that you misspelled this method and you're not actually overriding it. Adding the at override annotation provides a system of checks and balances when overriding method. This error will go away once we actually are overriding a method. All right, everybody, so that is method overriding. It's when a subclass provides its own implementation of a method rather than use one that's already defined. It allows for code reusability and you can give specific implementations of a method. We'll be seeing method overriding again with the toString method coming up in a future topic. And well, everybody, that is method overriding in Java.